Monday, right? Uh, you were able to submit on time. Okay, so make sure. Luckily, I don't think, yeah, there's another deadline coming for the uh, part two. And that's out already, so we should take a look at it. Shouldn't be that, uh, that difficult to do the part two, I think, of the program, the song program. And then, um, so the two other things that left are the written assignment that's based on uh, sorting and analysis. So we have to really talk about how to analyze sorting algorithms. And then the final exam. Okay, so we'll talk about the, the topics for the final and how we should prepare for it and so on. All right. Uh, so why is this not up there? OK, I think I think I do something. All right, so while we're waiting for this to come on, we can, uh, we can try to recall the, uh, the, the things we did the last time, right? So we talked about the linear search and binary search. Okay, then we talked about the sort of the best and average and worst cases. All right, so this table is really important. Uh, best, worst, and the average cases. Um, so the, the linear search, as you know, is a very simple idea. We just go one item at a time and looking for the thing you want to find. And what the best case is essentially, you know, you're searching through it, you know, it's somewhere close to the middle, uh, to the to the front. Okay, so we call that we go of one because we think it might be one or two or three or four or five comparisons you will find. Right. The worst case is essentially the element is somewhere here. In that case, we will have to look the entire array. Right, to find it, so we call it big O of n. Okay, big O kind of is like a way to express the performance of an algorithm. Okay? The average is sort of like in the middle somewhere here. Okay, so for that, we think that it would take about n over two uh, things, but so we write big O of n over two, but really, when you do big O, uh, big o, big o notation, we don't look at constants. So we know them, and so we said this is also big O of n, because we ignore the constants uh, with the big O notation. All right, so, so the average case, uh, although in practice the average case will run much faster than the worst case, but in mathematical terms they are both the same, uh, essentially. Okay? But when it comes to binary search, what is the uh, best case? So best case is this, right? Best case is not the, your element is the median element, it's somewhere here, okay? But, but still, you know, even if it's there, you have to divide, 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 right, before you can find it. Because you don't know it's there, right? It's not like linear search. So even in the best case, the binary search is log n, okay? Uh, on the average case, it's log n, and in the worst case, it's locked. So it doesn't really change much, okay? Uh, whether it's best or average or the worst case. All right. Any questions there? So search is a very important thing. I mean, you know, people, Google made billions of dollars, you know, doing the proper search, right? They figured out how to search the entire internet early on, and uh, they were able to uh, uh, make a lot of money and become a very big company. So the you know, people like you have learned searching algorithms and some of the simple things, and then gone on to sort of update these things and create better searching algorithms to make things work. These are the simple algorithms, okay? So the idea of sorting is the next thing. Sorting is also important. So when I talk about sorting, I think about a robot, right? How do I program a robot to, to sort? So if you do it by hand, you know how to do it. Uh, but if you give a robot a bunch of things, say, 
some, uh, some uh, say some boxes of Lego blocks, right? And then you ask the robot to sort them by color, size, weight, you know, shape, all those criteria. And that kind of a so what you can do is if you have if you know the number of attributes that you have to sort by, let's say you have ten attributes, right? <clears throat> so what you can do is to get ten baskets, right? Ten boxes, and then take the big one and pick one, and it goes into one of the ten. Right? So how bad is that sorting algorithm? How long it's going to take in terms of n? Right? So my, my description of the sorting algorithm is like a, you know, sorting based on some finite number of attributes. Finite in the sense that small number of attributes, right? So I got 10 buckets. I got n things here. Right? So I want to put these n things into the right bucket. So I pick one and put it into the right bucket. Pick another one, put it into the right bucket. So how long it takes to sort that way? What's that? Uh, it's going to take a long time in terms of n. In terms of n. Of course, if n is, uh, yeah. I know you, when, you, when you made a mess at your home, right? When you're small, maybe. Uh, <laughs> playing Lego, and maybe your parents asked you to sort it, and it took a long time, right? Okay, um, so uh, yeah. Would it be n factorial? N factorial. Why would it take n factorial? Because once I pick a piece, I have to do ten comparisons to make a decision, right? Right. So uh, once I pick a pick, once I pick one, I will see which one of those ten it belongs to. So for each piece, I'll do ten, the most comparison. Right, so if I have to do n of the n things, how many comparisons do I do? So for each one, I do 10. Right, because I have to make a decision to, to see which bucket it's going to go to, right? But if I have n things, what's the total number of comparisons I have to do? That's that. Someone know the answer, come on. Okay, about that? N, N. Okay, so the number of total number of comparisons I have to do is 10 N. But what is the big O of 10 N? It's N. Okay, so big O of 10 N is big O of N. So there's a sorting algorithm that can do things in big, uh, linear time. All right, but that's not but that's not a good sorting algorithm in the sense that it's fine for the buckets. But if the, all the items are different, and if you cannot determine how many buckets you need. Uh, you're not going to be able to do that, right? Okay. <laughs> Sorting is an important skill, okay? Because one day you might decide to run for president. Okay. You might decide to run for president, right? When you do, you will have to go to Google and answer the question like uh, Obama did in uh, 2007. You guys are probably hearing. I don't know how many of you have seen this one. How many of you have seen this video? Anyone? Okay. Oh, you have seen it? Okay. So let's see if I can play this. Actually, I won't be able to play this, but I will play because my PowerPoint won't. Let me play this video, okay, sir, because uh, like, I don't want you to watch the whole thing, but uh, this is kind of funny. I thought. Uh, I like to think of the presidency as a, as a job interview. Uh, now it's 
hard to get a job right. as president. Right. And, and you're going to the rigors now. It's also hard to get a job at Google. Right. We, um, we have questions, and we ask our candidates questions. And uh, this one is from Larry Schwimmer. What, you guys think I'm kidding? It's right here. What is the most efficient way to sort a million 32 bit integers? Well, uh, I'm, sorry, maybe I, I, I'm sorry, maybe. No, 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 I think the, uh, the bubble sort would be the wrong way to go. Uh, Come on, who told him this? Okay. I didn't see computer science. We, 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 we've got our spies in there. Well, <laughs> why not? Let, okay, let's ask, let's ask a, a different interview question. <laughs> So that's the only question I, I want to check. So that they ask him about the bubble sort. Like, how many of you know bubble sort? I mean, a bubble knew. I guess we really didn't know, right? Okay, what is bubble sort? Like, he was asking how long it's going to take to sort a million things using bubble sort. Yeah. So when you sort it in pairs of two, so you see if uh, the first yeah. one is, uh, should you know, be before and after the second one, yeah. and you sort it, you know, in pairs of two, switching. Okay, good. Places. So yeah, let's let's try to let's try and see what he was talking about, right? I'm just gonna I'm not gonna do a million, but I will do some right. small ones. So this is called bubble sort. This is the algorithm, and once you understand the algorithm, you can you can try to program it. So let's say you have two, one, uh, four, three. Okay, that's the array. So the way the bubble sort works is that, uh, so this is in an array, okay, looks at the adjacent pairs. And if the left one is bigger than the right one, we call it an invertible thing, like it, it's, it's, it's in the wrong order. Right? It should be one, two, but it's two, one. So what we do is when you find one of those things, we flip it. Okay, you swap the two things. And then you continue to compare, right? Two and four, it's in the right order. So I'm not going to do anything. And then four and three is in the wrong order, right? So I'm going to flip that. So I get this, right? So I got that. But I know by looking at it, the array is sorted, but I don't know that, right? As an algorithm, I don't know. So I go one more time. But, but here's, a, here's a property that's very important. What is true about this thing? Uh, after one round of flips, what is true about the array? The same order. Hmm? The same order. No, it's not in order, no. After one round, it's not in order. I mean, it uh, turns out the order in this case, right? but in general, if you're given any array, any random array, what is true about the array? I mean, I already circled that here, right? So if after one round, the largest one would have bubbled all the way to the end, okay? That's guaranteed. No matter where the largest one was, maybe nine was here, and then it kept coming, it kept coming, right? To the end. So after that, you only have to focus on this. Okay, now you try to compare the two things. Okay, no, it's fine. <laughs> compare these things, that's fine. So now we say, after that, this is in the right place. Guaranteed, right? In this case, I really didn't do anything, but it's guaranteed to be in the right place. And if I keep doing it, right, so the next one I, I compare and then I'm done. So at this point, the two is in the right place. Okay, so the largest one of the array is in the right place, okay? <coughs> Now, why is bubble sort bad, right? So Baba said that bubble sort is not the way to go. He's right. Bubble sort is the worst algorithm for sorting, okay? Uh, that's because it's very expensive to do bubble sort, okay? The cost of bubble sort is very high. Cost of bubble sort. All right, so how do we, how do we find the cost of bubble sort? This is the kind of thing you have to do uh, in the next assignment and the, probably the final exam, all that stuff, right? So when I try to think about the cost of bubble sort, 
I can't think of terms of a specific array. I have to think of an array of, let's say, size n. Right? And I will try to define the cost based on the value n. Right? That, because that's the, that's the number of things you have to do. Right? <laughs> so now, in the first round, right, I will look at the number of comparisons. Right? Uh, in the first round, in the round one, round one, right? What is the number of comparisons that we have to do in terms of n? If you look at this one here, how many things you did in the first thing? You did three, right? You had to do three pairs, compare three pairs to before the four came here. So if the size is four, then you have to do three. So if the size is n, how many you have to do? N minus one. one. Okay, so in round one, round one, you do n minus one comparisons. Okay, let's take a look at round two. This is round two, right? Round two, at most, I have to do two, right? But in terms of n, what is that? One less than the previous one, right? So in round two, I would do n minus two. two. Okay? Now if I keep going, how many rounds do I have to go before I'm done? Is it n or n minus one? I guess you know the once I um, the once I get to this place, I don't have to do the last one, right? So it's really n minus one. I just have to get n minus one max elements in the right place. That's it. Okay? So the final round would be n minus one. Okay? So the way you do the analysis is like this. Now, if I had a two here, I had a two there. If I had a one here, I had a one here. So this means if I have an n minus one here, what do I write? N minus one. Okay, that turns out to be plus one. In other words, the last round, you only do one, at most one operation. Okay, so the total, total come to this. It's gonna be, if you go backwards, right, it'll be one plus two plus up to n minus one. That's the total, because each round will have n minus one, n minus two, and so on. Right, now we wanna come up with a big notation for this, all right? Now, the one of the important things you have to remember, maybe, I don't know whether you were given, you'll be given the, the cheat sheet or not, but if it's not given to you, you have to know this. Because without this, you won't be able to uh, uh, do the rest of it, okay? So what you need to know is that the sum of the first n integers, we have a formula for them. Okay, what is our formula? We did that uh, one time, right? How did we argue about that? We said that if you want to find the sum, I don't know what the end is, right? What I can do is I can add one and n, which will give me n plus one. Then I'll add two and n minus one, which also gives me n plus one, right? So we said that really adding the whole thing means that getting this n plus one, how many times? Half, half the time, right? So therefore the sum is really that. Okay, what is this equal to? If you simplify it, it'll be n squared over two plus n over two. Okay, and in big O terms, what is this? In big O we drop, what do we do? We drop all the constants, we drop the low order terms, right? So this is really big O, n squared. Okay, so I think I'm going to claim that this sum, right, if I want to talk about this sum, then it's really the, you know, I can, I can do a little trick here. I can say this is the same as saying, let me go up to n and then subtract it, right? I will get the, I add it and I subtracted it, but the reason I did that because I know this is big O of n squared. That's big O of n squared. 
And therefore, you can safely assume that whether you have n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, doesn't matter. It's big of n squared. Okay? So therefore, the bubble sort, the cost of bubble sort, is very high. Okay, cost of bubble sort is very high. Uh, any questions there? Uh, but I think if I want to focus on the, the other sorting algorithms. Uh, so let's talk about the uh, different sorting algorithms. So first of all, to sort, the items must be compared. Right? Either you have uh, you have some way to compare them. Okay, their size, their shape, whatever. Right? This is a metric to compare. Them. That's what you write the compare to function and so on. Okay, sorting has many applications. So you know, if we think of sorting like uh, just a bunch of, uh, we take an array and sort it, but it really has a lot of practical applications, right? Because when you order Uber or Lyft, how many of you like Uber? It's your non-scientific poll, okay, Lyft? Uh, two guys, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so anyways, I've done everything. Some are not, right? I like my car. <laughs> okay, uh, so, so what happens is like, you have a junction and you have your app, and the app has a GPS on, right? So the GPS tells the Uber people where you are, right? The location, exact location. And then it can find all the people in a certain circle, right? How many people are there? And then it can compute the distance from each of the cars to you, right? So the distance can be based on, you know, because it's the grid city and all that, right? So that can be done. I mean, it's like Google Maps, right? So that's, that's Google Maps. Now, the, in order to recommend someone, it'll look for the closest one, right? How do you find the closest one? You can say, let me find the minimum distance among all those distances, right? So it's a find me problem. Or you could sort it. Right? And then find the main, and if it's not there, then you look for the, because the, the main guy may say, okay, I already have a right, maybe let's go to the next one. Okay, if that has a right, let's go to the next one. But the problem is even more complicated than that, because these things are constantly moving. Right, therefore their distances are changing. So this means you have to completely continue to resort things to find the, the closest person. And eventually, uh, some, one thing is agreed upon, and then, uh, things happen, right? So the sorting has a lot of different things. So the sorting can be done by the distance from one object to another to find out which object is the closest to you uh, in terms of sorting, right? So you can figure out uh, where to go. So it doesn't have to be a sort of a simple line there. All right, so to do sorting, you have to compare. Okay, so you if you have primitive types like integers and long and all that, you can just use the natural op operators to compare, but if you have objects, you have to use a compare to function. Right? Even if you write your own compare to function, you have to use the, the natural things to, to define that, right? You'll say, I'm going to compare by the distance or compare by the, uh, the size or something, right? So, but you have to write your own compare to function unless it's given to you from the Java API. But it, typically, you think about, you know, I have to write my compare function to, to do this. Okay, so there are two elementary sorting methods that I want to discuss. Okay, uh, so there are, one is called selection sort. So let me show you uh, an example. Okay, so let's take the same example. Okay, so let's take two, one, four, three. So if you look at the algorithm, the algorithm says, how do we sort? Uh, we find the maximum in the current array. So what I mean by current array is that, let's take a look at this one, okay, and find the max. Who is the max here? Four. Four, right? Okay, how much work you have to do to find the max? In big or terms? You have to do, we'll, we'll come back to it. Okay, so let's, let's just, Focus on the algorithm, okay? Come back. So once you find the max, what you have to do is you swap the two. Okay? 
okay? So you have this. I didn't touch that. I only swapped these two, okay? Now, just like bubble soap, I only have to worry about this. And my array size has gone down by one now because I know the big one is in the right place. So now I find the max of that, okay, and swap with the max. In this, swap with the last element, right? In this case, nothing happened. It swaps itself. So that's fine. So now I have to worry about this. Right? So I find the max, and then I swap. Swap with the last element, right? So at the end, I got one, two, three, four. All right, so take a piece of paper and do this one. <laughs> Let me write down a random array, see if you can do the uh, selection sort for me. All right, so I don't want to hear any noise. I want you to do the, well, you can talk to people if you want to talk about this. So let's say we have five, 10, two, six, seven, and four. Try to do selection sort on this. Take a piece of paper and do it, because if you don't do it, you're not gonna learn this, okay? It's, it's harder than you think. It might look easier than I do it, but you have to do it yourself. You have to write the proper steps. If you don't understand that, you're not gonna be able to answer the question. So what's the first, what do we do first? Okay, so take the 10 and swap with the last one, right? And then we focus on this one. So now we take one. We take seven and swap with the last one because that's the maximum of that array, right? So we don't have to do anything there. Now we focus on this one. So we find the max, which is happened to be that. It doesn't have to be, right? So you swap it itself. Now we focus on this. Now we gotta do some swapping, right? Because five and two need to be swapped. Right? So now I'm gonna focus on this. So at this point, I find the max, and you swap it itself, you're done, right? So essentially, it's right, finding the max and moving it to the end. That's what you're doing. Because now if you write down all the things, you will have five here, six here, uh, seven here, and 10 here. Right, so that's the, that's the array. Okay, so that's called the selection sort. It's not that difficult. Uh, but, but, you know, there are a lot of subtle things that you have to worry about when you try to implement or understand exactly how it works. Now, could I do this differently? Like, is there another selection sort of version that I can do? Yeah? Maybe with the minimum and swap? Yeah, with the exactly. First you find the minimum and swap with the first one. Right? So in that case, the getting sorted from the left. Okay. So that's selection sort, okay? So let's do the next one called the insertion sort. All right, insertion sort. So I'm gonna do it for the same one. Okay, so the idea of the insertion sort is that we assume that, keep, keep the noise down because I can hear a lot of talking. Guys, keep it down. Okay, so we assume that the first element by itself is sorted. Okay, now the goal is to sort this one, right? The goal is to create, a, we, have, we have an array of size one that's already sorted. And then we want to create an array of size two that's sorted. So then what I do is I take one and try to insert it. So if I have to insert it, I have to push the two here, right? So now I have an array of size two, which is sorted. Okay, so the next round, what I'm gonna do is, I will try to insert this. 
right, to this sorted array in the right way. But in order to do that, I compare this to that, and as soon as I realize that this is bigger than that, right? If this is bigger than that, do I have to com continue to compare? Do I have to compare? If I realize that this is this is less than this, I don't have to do that, right? Because it's sorted. So the biggest one in the sorted part is here. So if, if this guy is bigger than that, there's nothing else to do. Right? So I'm done. So now I have an array of size three, which is sorted. Okay, so the final step in this uh, thing is to insert three into the right place. So to insert three, what I do is I compare three to four. Well, three is less than four. So what I will do is I'll push the four here, but I'll save a copy of three, because otherwise I will lose it. Right, three is the one I'm going to insert. Okay, so I will push the four here. Now I have a four here too, right? Now I will compare four to uh, three to two. Okay, now three is bigger than two, right? So because, therefore, I'm not going to do anything, right? What do I, where do I put the three? I put the three right here. Because I have two fours, right? So I will always have a duplicate, and I will replace one of the duplicates with the one I say. So the insertion sort idea is that you continue to insert things into the right place. OK, so let me show you some uh, animations to understand these two ideas. Oh, yeah, maybe you should do uh, insertion, insertion sort of this one. Why don't you try create a crowd? 5, 10, 10, <coughs> 6, 7, 4. OK, give it a try. Follow the algorithm and show me the correct steps. <laughs> the, uh, the way you get started is by assuming this is in the right place. Okay, then you have to create an array of size 2, size 3, size 4, size 5, and finally the big thing. So in other words, as you go through the thing, these arrays are going to be sorted. OK, what goes into those things? What goes into this box here? Five tens, because you insert 10 into this, which gives you five tens. Right? What goes into this box here? Two five ten. Now we insert two into the right place. Now you can you can see that I'm kind of pushing things to the right in order to find the space to insert. Right? And the next one is what? Six. Six. So it would be two five six ten. Okay, so in this case I would have pushed ten to this side and then I realized six is bigger than five. And I already have a 10 here, I will replace that with a 6. Right. What's the next one? Six, Try to six, insert six, 7 into this. Six, seven. Right. So where does it go? It goes here, right? Mm -hmm. It goes here means that you have to push 10 here. OK, now we say, seven. OK, well, 7 is bigger than 6, so I'm not going to do anything there. I will put the 7 here. Mm -hmm. Right? 5, two, five. and 2. OK, so finally, I have to do 4. Right? So to do the 4, I have to do like 12. Again, what is going to happen is that uh, 10 will get pushed to this side, 7 will get pushed, and then 6 will get pushed, right? and the 5 will get pushed, because all of them are bigger than 4. And then eventually, I'm going to get a 5 here, so that's where the 4 is going to go. Yeah, so sort of like shifting and finding the right place to insert. So those are the proper uh, steps to the insertion. So uh, you do that. <coughs> okay. 
All right, so here's an animation of the selection sort. What is selection sort again? We find the max and we put it in the right place. But this animation is not the, not the same, right? It's still called selection sort. What is this doing? Yeah. It's finding the minimum. Okay. Otherwise, we have come from the top. So it's finding the minimum and placing them in the right place. So this is like some points in a plane, and you can decide how far these points are. I think that what, what this is doing is it's trying to determine how far these points are from the origin. Okay, and then sort them by the distance from the origin to each point, and so we know which one is the closest to the, to the origin. That's what this is doing. All right. So that's the selection sort, but it's a different version of the selection sort. So here's another example of the selection sort. You can see that in this case, I have put a, a red box around the max, and then it swaps the max, which is nine with the two. The next max is eight, that's the second largest. Eight with the two again. The next one is five, five with the three. Uh, next max is two, two with the five. And then finally you get to an array of size one, so you die, right? Okay. Um, but before I get to the code, let me uh, let me write some pseudo code. Okay. So I don't. We don't expect you to know how to write. Selection sort and insertion sort, they're subtle sometimes, you know, they look simple, but you can be one off and things can go really wrong. Okay, so we have to be careful with the, the idea. Okay, so I'm gonna write some pseudocode to describe the selection sort. Pseudocode means you know it's partial code but not the real Java code. You can convert it if you want. Right? So let's think about the, the picture here. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to think in terms of this. This is a the most general way to think. Suppose you have an array of size say i. Okay, so this is an array of size i. Okay, so the array size i is initially n. Right, you have an array of size n, but I will reduce the amount of things I have to do. Right. Um, so let me let me uh, uh, describe that by this. So a and bracket zero dot dot i minus one. What this says is that all the elements from index zero to i minus one, and there are i of them. Right. If you add them up, you have i things. Okay, so the way the pseudocode is going to work is like this. So you notice that every stage you have some size array, right? And you find the max, right? So my algorithm steps are like this: find max. In fact, you don't want to just find max; you want to find the max index. Max index is where's the max because I have to swap it. Right, just by knowing the max is not, not good enough, okay? Find max index of zero to i minus one. Okay, so find the max index. That means, you know, you got a max index, right? What's the next thing I do? I'm gonna swap that, right? So the next step is swap A's of max index. With what? With the last one. Okay, the last one is called a sub i minus one. Okay, so this is one step of the algorithm. The one step of the algorithm is given this general notion of an array, I will find the max index. So max index could be somewhere here. Okay, that's the uh, that's the value of the largest element in that array. All right, now 
I can't do this one time, right? I have to do it many times. So I have to run a loop that goes from, where do I start the i from? What's the first array we look at? One. Uh, no, when we look at the array, do we look at the entire thing? So I minus one. Right, so that would be what? What is i? Yeah? Uh, yeah, well, I'm not talking about this particular example. I want in terms of n. It's going to be n, right? So this will be, um, I will start i from n. Because remember, if i is n, I'm looking at 0 to n minus 1. That's the entire array. Right? OK? And then as I go, I will reduce the i. And that's my decrement operator. Because now I'm going to look at a smaller one. One less, one less, one less, right? What is the last one? Is it zero? Is it one? Is it one? Is it zero? Could it be zero here? Well, the, la the last one is going to be one. 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 It's one, right? So I'm looking at an array of zero to one minus one, which is, which is zero. That means I'm looking at an array of just one element, right? So you can go all the way to here. Okay, that's your selection. So, right, without, I'll show you the code, but I will show you a code that reflect this pseudo code. Okay, but you can see that how I thought about the the pseudo code in terms of uh, in terms of i. But let me show you the, the actual code so you can relate the code to the pseudo code. Okay. We'll get this code, so don't worry too much about the session. So it's it's the so here's the selection source, right? You can see that what I wrote in pseudocode is kind of in Java code now. Okay? Uh, notice that the, uh, the big loop there, actually there I'm, I'm starting from n minus 1 because I call the n the a dot length. Right, so, so that's okay. Right, so it's just a be careful. So although I have n here, <coughs> I assume the n is the uh, n is the really the uh, you assume I is uh, yeah. So I is the because I because I think if I think about this as zero to i, it would be n minus one, right? Maybe let me change that. Okay, so that you can. So let's just do this. Okay, and then I will start from n minus one. Okay, now you can see that the, the code that you see on the board and the pseudocode I have. What is this one here? Find max index of a0 to i. You can see that uh, that's the for loop inside, right? That's, that's where you're going to find the max index. Okay, and then what are those last three lines? You're swapping it. Right? The last three lines that you're swapping. So, it's always a good idea to write the pseudocode before you write the actual code because it, the chances are, you know, it's less likely you will make a mistake when you go from pseudocode to that. Okay, there are some details there, but you, you can do that, right? Okay. Now, let's talk about this. The cost of selection source. Okay, cost of selection sort, okay? I'm gonna, when I do the analysis, I'm gonna do using the pseudo code, right? So I'm gonna think about how many things I have to do in the worst case. Suppose you have an array of size, <coughs> this is going from zero to i, right? So you have i plus one things in there. Now, um, how many operations you have to do to find the max? 
not I want in terms of I. So the total operations you need for this this step here, right? Right. You okay? I mean, I'm trying to generalize things a little bit so that you can you can understand that, right? So this would be I operations, right? To find the max. Let's let's say you know this I was like five. You have six things there, so you have to do at least five at most five comparisons, right? So it, it could be I, I minus one, whatever you want to say, that's fine. Okay. How fast is to swap two things? <clears throat> to swap two things, I mean, let's not even worry about it because it's like a, a three operations here, right? So this would require three operations, okay? So the most of the cost goes into doing this big loop and every time you go through the loop, you're doing I things. Okay, so if you argue this way, it's easy to understand that when I equals N minus one, right, you'll be doing N minus one things. When I equals N minus two, that's one less, right, you will be doing N minus two things. So this is I equals N minus one, I equals N minus two, and so on. Eventually I will go, I is gonna go down to one. Right? At this point, you're going to be doing just a single operation. Okay, so again, the total operations is this, right, for the selection. So, right, the total is the, you know, each round it does something and then it goes through that. Now, we already know the big O of this one. What is the big O of this? The sum. N. You have it here on the board. N squared. Okay? So mathematically, the cost of selection sort and the cost of bubble sort is not different. Okay, they are the same. But in practice, bubble sort is so much worse than the selection sort. Why is that? Okay, think about what you do, right? Yeah, question. Yeah, go ahead. So you're doing a lot of swaps, right? Yeah. Okay. So that's the idea. In the bubble sort, you're doing a lot of swaps. Right? Those swaps are very expensive. But here, notice that you only do one swap at the end. Right? For each run, you're doing one swap. So the number of swaps is less, and that's why the bubble selection sort is better than bubble sort. Yeah. Uh, you're not doing, because you have an array that's already there, so you're not, you shouldn't be doing a new array. You're just changing stuff in the array, but you're not creating a new array. Is it, that's the question you're asking, right? Yeah. But if you, yeah, if you create new arrays, if you want to make, a, make it bigger, now you have to add more, more things to that, right? I, I understand. Okay, okay. All right, so, uh, Okay, I'm, I'm trying to do this in a, in a more uh, detailed way so that you guys can hopefully get uh, hold of this idea because it's really needed for the uh, next one, the next assignment. Okay, um, so here's the selection sort. It's a little bit different from what I, what I want, but uh, okay, I'm not gonna go through that. I'm gonna just, uh, okay, I did the counting operations. I'm gonna skip through that. Okay, so the next one is the insertion sort. Now you can see this is an example of an insertion sort where you have, um, you're inserting, notice that the 54 is assumed to be sorted, and then you try to insert 26 into to the array. So what you see on the left shaded is the sorted part. So your goal in the insertion sort is to get the, the left array sorted and get it bigger and bigger and bigger, eventually it becomes the whole thing. 
Right, so the whole idea of the insertion sort is just doing that. Okay? All right, so let's write the algorithm pseudocode for our insertion sort. Okay, I'm just going to write the pseudocode for insertion sort. Okay, again, I'm going to think in more general terms so that I can write this inside the loop. Okay, so what I'm going to think about is something like this. Suppose I have this array from 0 to i minus 1 is sorted. Okay, so initially i is equal to 1. That means it's just one element, and that's sorted by definition, right? Just have one element. Okay, assume that at the ith stage of the operation, the 0 to i minus 1 is sorted. So your goal is to get the ith element inserted into this, right? And then create an array that's sorted, but one more now. And that's the whole idea of the insertion sort. But how do I write this in uh, pseudocode just like I did here? So without focusing too much on the inner loops here, it's because Hey, this is a loop, right? So there's a nested loop here, but I didn't focus on that, right? I say I know how to do that. In fact, you can make this another function if you want, right? So you don't have to worry about the complexity of having a lot of things. So, the, so here's my, uh, here are the operations I have to do, right? First, I have to insert a sub i to this array from 0 to i minus 1 in order. Right? That's what I want to do. At the ith stage, I want to do that. But then I will say, uh, if I want to wrap this in a, in a loop, I will say something like this. For i from, what, 1 to i less than n, i plus plus, I will do this. Right? That's your insertion sort. Pseudocode. All right, so think about this. Um, if i equals 1, then what I'm trying to do is I'm going to insert a1 into a0 to 0, right? If i is 1, this is just a single element. If i equals 2, I will insert a2 into 0 to 2 minus 1, which is 0, 1. Okay, if i equals 3, I will insert a3 into 0 to 2. So, Everything I described there and as, a, as a procedure now is captured using notation, right? So it's very simple if you think like this. In terms of a general case, and then you put a loop around it, and then you can do that, right? So let's talk about the complexity. I'm just going to analyze this complexity of uh, insertion. So. In fact, before that, maybe I can even show you the code for that pseudocode. What does the, how does the actual code looks like? Uh, okay. Looks like this. Uh. <laughs> so here's the insertion sort, right? So this is my outer loop. <coughs> and this is the code that's trying to insert because the majority of the work, the, your work is done there, right? That, that code I highlighted, that Y loop, is the one that's trying to insert AI into the right place. Notice that I start by saying J equals I, so I'm looking at, and notice that at the end I say AJ equals target, so I found the right place, which is the index, and I insert it. Okay, so you can read the code, I mean, if you took a note of this one, you can try to map this into the court, the actual court, and see how it works. So I think in the test and the other places, you should be able to take a piece of court like this and run through it with a small example. Okay? Uh, it's, it's so much easier to focus on this one because, you know, once you understand this, then you can kind of try to build each thing. It's a big thing here, right? 
So let's talk about the complexity of uh, insertion sort. Okay, let's take this step. Right? I want you to think about the number of comparisons you have to do in order to insert this, this, this element into this array. How big is this array? In terms of i. Okay, so I'm, I'm talking in general terms here, right? So this, this array is of size i, right? Because it goes from 0 to i, minus 1. So if I have a size, of, you know, let's say that I have a, an array of uh, three things, right? And I have this new guy I'm trying to insert. The most number of comparisons I have to do is i, right? I have to do just three comparisons, right? So therefore, you can assume that each one of these things, to, in order to insert this, I will have to do i comparisons. Okay. So now, if I think about the loop, saying when i equals one, right, I will do one comparison. When i equals two, right, I'm going to be doing two comparisons, and then like that. The final i I'm going to work on is the n minus 1. At that point, I will do n minus 1 comparison. Okay? So what's the total? The total is going to be 1 plus 2 plus up to n minus 1. What is the big O? n squared. Okay? Now you might ask, okay, it looks like bubble sort insertion sort, selection sort, all seems like we go of n squared, which is true. The mathematical boundaries n squared for all of them. But in practice, uh, insertion sort is much faster, okay? Let's, see, let's do, uh, let me try to prove it to you that uh, insertion sort is better in all cases. And then we'll look at some, uh, some experiments. Okay, so, Here's a comparison, okay? So the uh, insertion, I will only compare insertion and selection because uh, you don't have to know a bubble sort. I just mentioned that because uh, unless you want to be present, right? Then you have to know bubble sort. Okay? Right, otherwise, you don't have to know bubble sort. All right, so I will look at the cases, right? Remember in the search case, I will say something like, what if the element is near the beginning or in the middle or the end? In this case, I'm sorting. So I'm going to say, OK, what if the array is already sorted? How will the insertion sort behave? OK? And then I ask the question, what if the array is random? some random array of things I want to sort. Then I ask the question, sort of like a reverse sorted array. Right? So what if the array is reverse sorted? Right? So let's, let's start with this. Sorted and insertion sort. Right? Sorted means something like this. You didn't know that when you started it, but it was like this. Right? So in the worst case, how many comparisons you're going to be doing here? It's already sorted. So in order to sort the entire thing, right, let's think like this. I'm going to start from here, try to insert it, right? But I only have to do one comparison to know that. I'm not going to do any more, right? Next one. I only have to do one. Next one, I only have to do one. Okay, so. So the insertion sort is the best. That means you only have to do linear number of things, like only n things, if it's already sorted. So that's like the best case. So there's a huge difference between n, n, n and n squared. Okay. Now if it's random, you can assume I, I have no idea. You will probably take the analysis I did. If it's reverse sorted, is it the, the worst? Suppose you try to do insertion sort of a reverse ordered thing, right? So now you have to do one and swap it. And then this guy goes all the way to the end. This guy goes all the way to the end, right? 
So that's the worst case, because you will, the worst case is that every element you're trying to insert will go to the beginning. So this means a lot of comparisons to do. All right, so the worst case is really the reverse sorted, but even in the worst case, if the, you go against squared, it's gonna be very slow in session sort if you give a reverse sorted array. It will sort, but, right? <coughs> the selection sort really doesn't care, right? Because selection sort, you have to pick the max. That's gonna take n things to do, right? And then you have to do it n times. So selection sort, always like this. Okay, because selection sort doesn't take advantage of the uh, the properties of the set, right? The, maybe it's already sorted, and insertion sort take advantage of that, right? So yeah. If total sort were um, already given a sorted array, wouldn't it then be as fast or just as slow as bottle sort? Because if you're doing the same amount of comparison, and yeah. you're not doing it, it's still going to be. But you're still comparing all the way to the end, right? Uh, no, you do. You're getting it less and less and less. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're asking the question if, if you have a already sorted array, would the bubble sort be fine? I mean, that's just as fast as insertion. Uh, no, but you have to do pairs. Because in session sort, you just do one in each round. But isn't that basically a pair for insertion sort? Because yeah. Uh, no, I think, let me see, I think the, let me see whether you have a point. Um, so in the bubble sort, if, I, if you're given this, right, to go one round, you compare, 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 three operations, right? And then you will have to focus on this one, right? So you compare one, two, three. Now you compare, compare, two operations, right? And then you have to focus on that only. So now you compare one operation. So, so a total of six, okay? Now, in the insertion sort, if you did the insertion sort, right, the first one, you were, you're trying to insert this into the right place, one operation, right? You're trying to insert this into the right place, one operation, right? Because I only have to do one to know that, right? And then you do another one. So only three operations, as opposed to six. Oh, that's true. I think if you have, you know, if you can make a, a flag that says, you know, if you didn't do any swaps in the first round, that means the array is already sorted. So don't do it. Right. So with an adjustment to bubble sort, yeah, you can make it run as fast as insertion sort in that case. Okay. All right. So let me show you some uh, experiments so you can get an idea of how.